Control of the U.S. Senate could come down to Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, swing states where Democratic candidates John Fetterman and Mandela Barnes have seen their early leads shrink after being hammered by Republicans on the issues of crime and inflation. Fetterman has acknowledged he has been hampered by his recovery from a stroke, unable to campaign for several months. In, in an unusual memo last night, he said there are larger questions for both campaigns, though, as to whether the White House and the National Party... Well, he said that Dr. Oz will, in fact, have the advantage in that memo, trying to lower expectations, because Oz has so much TV experience. But there are other issues as well as Fetterman's health, including the economy. Did the White House rely too much on hoping that abortion would get, would the abortion decision from the Supreme Court would fuel voter turnout and not focus on inflation soon enough? Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Connor Lamb, who ran against John Fetterman in the Pennsylvania Senate primary. His district includes most of the northwestern Pittsburgh suburbs, so you're probably the best person to talk to here about what is going to happen in, you know, if Pittsburgh and the suburbs turn out for John Fetterman with a big margin. We were talking to the Allegheny County Commissioner an hour ago. He said it's got to be about 75-25 here right. for turnout. And then Philadelphia has to also have a big turnout, and the Philadelphia suburbs have to break well. What yeah. are you seeing so far? Well, I think there's a lot of enthusiasm for the Fetterman campaign, um, and I think you have to look at the whole context, which is we also have this very hard-fought governor's race in our state at the same time. And you have a lot of you know, suburban parents, like I am, who are terrified of the idea of Doug Mastriano becoming the governor and having control over our children's education. So I think that's also a factor that is driving a lot of people to come, want to come out um, in two weeks. And I think that's good for the Fetterman camp. But his campaign actually has always been premised on the idea that you have to fight hard for votes in all 67 counties, that you know, you'll, you'll get a certain turnout in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia naturally. But we as a party can no longer to take for granted the entire rest of the map. And so he and Shapiro both have really tried to fight for those voters, too. And I think it's going to pay off. Of course, he relied on social media and on trolling Dr. Oz for being a New Jersey resident and a multimillionaire and all the rest. And we saw, you know, ridiculing his campaign video about buying you know, groceries. That said, the coup de day response, that said, he wasn't able to campaign. And while people are sympathetic to him for that, for not being out meeting the voters, has that hampered him? Do you expect people to vote the straight Democratic ticket, or will there be a lot of ticket splitting where people vote against Doug Mastriano and support Josh, Josh Sapiro, but are still uncertain about John Fetterman? Well, Pennsylvania has a, a clearer history of ticket splitting than a lot of other states. We saw it in 2020, where Joe Biden wins by 80,000 votes, and then they elect two Republicans statewide. So. I, those are the same kind of voters that sent me to Congress three times. So I was always trying to tailor arguments to the Democrats and to them at the same time. Uh, I think this year, what, what we really need to be saying to them is on the issues of substance. You think about an issue like Social Security. You know, Dr. Oz wants to come after us on inflation, but his party is actually admitting that they have plans to cut Social Security. You know, in a year, if I had to tell you the issue I heard most about from constituents in my last five years, it's how frustrated seniors are when every time Social Security would give them a cost of living increase, the Medicare premium would rise by the exact same amount or more. So they never got ahead. Well, this year, for the first time, that isn't happening. Social Security is going up by more. Medicare is actually going down for most people. And so that's an accomplishment of the Democratic Party, but one that is valuable to all Pennsylvanians and a number of these independent and even conservative older voters who, you know, we're encouraging to just vote their pocketbook. And I think that's going to be a major advantage. It doesn't always picked up in the news stories, but it's definitely out there. What about the House? Is it possible that Republicans are going to win your old seat? Uh, certainly anything's possible. I mean, these these districts are very close and hard fought, and there's a lot of money being spent on the same on the both sides. Um, you know, again, I think that What's happening this year is the Republicans want voters to look at this like a traditional election. You know, there are some things going wrong in the country, so throw out the party in power and give us a chance. But our response to that, I think, has actually been quite strong, and, and the Democrats aren't getting enough credit for saying, this isn't normal. These people who are presenting themselves to you as Republicans are, are Trump loyalists and Trump acolytes. I mean, think about what Dr. Oz had to do to get Donald Trump's support. 
Donald Trump didn't just give it to him. He made him and Dave McCormick literally beg for it. They made multiple trips down to Florida. And when you think about the commitment that it takes to Donald Trump and his whole enterprise of crimes, you know, what, what resulted in him being twice impeached and now facing a possible indictment, it's just laughable that they would try to run a campaign about crime. I mean, they had a guy committing high crimes and misdemeanors in the office for the last four years, and where were any of them? They're gladly accepting his support. So I think by continuing to make the argument in those terms, we're showing people, you know, even if you wouldn't normally vote a straight Democratic ticket, if you care about the fundamental values of this country, if you care about who is going to take an oath to the Constitution and actually stick by that oath, you know, Democrats are who you want to vote for this year. Connor Lamb, it's great to see you again. Thank you for coming to Pittsburgh. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And we, we love it. We're all going to be watching the debate tonight, too.